everybody. Hope that woke you all up. <laughs> but it's uh, great to be back. Uh, so welcome to day two of Farmer to Farmer. Um, back in the black is the theme. So that is what we're going to be talking about all of today and tomorrow. Um, and there's just an incredible set of content that is coming up here today. And at 8.45 uh, here right after I talk, Jocko Willink will come on and we'll have uh, a really good amount of time uh, to talk with Jocko. So uh, just like last night, a lot of things are gonna be in the app. We'll talk about that. So make sure uh, to get your questions in. So Jocko will come on at 8.45 and run to about uh, 10 o'clock. Um, and then just a little more as to how the day is gonna work. We'll have uh, the FBN 2023 announcements at 10.30. We have the exhibitor, partner, innovator, lunch and learns. We'll go through those at the end of the talk at uh, 10 30 so you can see what's going to happen at the lunch schedule this afternoon we have an incredible set of farmer panels many of you are are on or participating in um, and that's our chance to let our members uh run the show and be the stars of this show uh, which is always a lot of fun at farmer to farmer and that's going to be from two to four and then we will have the trade show and the trade show is running throughout so you can participate throughout at the trade show if you want to be upstairs you want to come down to the trade show that's just fine, it's gonna be open the entire time. This evening at 6.30, we will have Peter Zai here. Um, tomorrow, uh, for those of you here tomorrow, we will have the future of direct and finance. We'll have a whole host of business trainings. We'll have another round of innovation sessions with our partners. And uh, at the end of Farmer to Farmer, we'll have a fireside chat with uh, FBN CEO, co-founder Amol Deshpande, uh, which is not to be missed. So that will be tomorrow at two o'clock. So that's what you have to expect over the next two days. Okay, so uh, just like last night, we're gonna do Q&A in the FBN community app. So definitely uh, use the Wi-Fi. Um, F2F guest, if you're not on it, farmers first. Uh, for anyone who's having app problems last night, definitely get on the Wi-Fi um, and then post a question. I've posted the question uh, for Jocko. So you can get in there now and, and start posting your questions. You can wait till he starts talking. Uh, because that's going to be a lot of fun. Remember, the event info is up there as well. Uh, so for those of you who weren't here yesterday, uh, use the app to, uh, you can find the agenda and everything you need to know about the event. Okay, all right. So let's talk a little bit about why, um, what has brought us here and uh, what, the, uh, what the last few years have been all about. But first, uh, we're going to do, uh, go back to our road to farmer to farmer. The most important question, and we've asked this every year, is, why do you do it? Why do you farm? So we posted this out on social media, said, tell us why you farm. And it is always incredible the, the types of stories that people send in uh, to describe their operations, because ultimately, this is what's behind all of this. So now, we'll roll, why do you farm? First of all, having a normal job, well, that wouldn't be any fun. And every minute I had when I was little, all I wanted to do was ride with dad and grandpa in the tractor, trucks, or combine. Who doesn't love tractors, trucks, and combines? I think my favorite part of farming is being able to move the herd in less than a minute. And maybe the fact that I get to do it with my best friend every day. Why do I like to farm? I've enjoyed it since I was three or four. I don't remember where the love started, but I knew that's all I wanted to do. At the age of 19, I got to start with my own six acres of soybeans. The year after that, I started growing popcorn. Here recently, it's really started to pop off. I enjoy every second of it, getting to showcase my farm on social media, how the growing process works, and then someone ordering, it's showing up in their mailbox, and they get to enjoy the food that I grew just for them. All right, that, that, was, that was Gavin's four at the end there. Some of you, um, now I hope you, you got uh, Gavin's popcorn in your welcome bag. That is uh, from Gavin's farm in Martinsburg, Missouri. Uh, Tony Fast from Lester, Montana, and Kayla uh, Wazorek from Missouri as well. Okay, let's uh, roll two. I can't tell you why I do it. Every day on the farm is definitely not sunshine and rainbows. But I suppose when your car seat is in the cab of a tractor at five months old instead of in the family car, maybe eventually it's just you don't know any better. It's what you want to do. Your first corn crop popping out of the ground, getting home from school and, and hopping in the combine with your dad, your, your first cow having a calf. 
those are all feelings I wouldn't trade for the world. And, and maybe I want my kids to experience those things. Why do I farm? Tell me what's better than that right there. Watching a cow give birth. It's amazing. Why do I farm? Because I feel like I'm a steward of the land. I have to take care of these animals. I'm a ter caretaker. I take this little seed. I grow this massive crop. I feed all these cows. In turn, they help me feed the world. That's why I farm. I farm because every day I want to find new ways to do things. Like changing the oil on a semi. I mean, now these filters are just way easier to get to. You learn something new every day in this job. <laughs> that, that was Ethan Clark, uh, who is here, and he got it flipped over. Um, and uh, Mitch Thompson uh, and Joe Johnson as well. So thank you guys. Thank you to everybody who sent in videos. We have a lot more, and we'll show more uh, tomorrow as well. Um, you know, I think one of the things that just, you know, I hope you all enjoyed the talk last night with Alex. It was absolutely incredible to hear his perspective and how he has uh, gone about climbing and, and life. Um, the thing that I took away from that that was, you know, just just remarkable is when he said, there's no supposed to. You know, the breakthrough for him on the wall was realizing if he followed the route that he'd always followed or that was supposed to be the route, that was the route that had been set, uh, that was actually impossible to do without a rope. Uh, it was when he changed his perspective and realized that actually if I'm not bound by a rope, I can play by different rules and there is no supposed to, that the possibility of actually doing that opened up. So that's, that is uh, applicable for not just entrepreneurs like FBN, but for all of you as well. It's just remembering there is no supposed to. I, I really love that. Okay, so back in the black. Uh, back in the black, why is that the theme? Well, um, for many of you, the last two years have been uh, decent years in farm profitability. We'll talk about some of those numbers. For many of you, they've been very challenging because of weather, other factors that have been going on, surging input costs, and the factors that have been out of our control. Um, profitability is at the heart of FBN and our mission of driving farm profitability, enabling profit potential on the farm through all the things that we do. So that is always our focus. Our focus is building a platform and a network to make you more successful on the farm. When you talk about profitability and the things that have hampered or affected profitability, uh, we have to talk about black swans. Black swans are the concept of, in economics, of low probability, high risk events that can completely alter the course of markets, the world, or, uh, or, or, or global events, okay? Um, and so the last few years have maybe felt like a flock of black swans. <laughs> uh, what was once low probability now feels like an everyday occurrence. Uh, if you think back to 2022, or 2020, uh, you get anxiety just thinking about the word 2020, um, but the world completely changed. The world completely changed with COVID and then the reactions to COVID, the, the ways governments intervened, that it was just black swan after black swan after black swan. And you can just think about 2020 with COVID, 2021 with inflation, supply chain shock. Remember when the ports shut down, manufacturing went offline from hurricanes, it was shock after shock after shock. And now we get to 2022 and we've got war in Ukraine. We have global strife in a way that's impacting markets, fertilizer supply and grain prices in ways that have not happened for a generation or generations. When we talk about black swans, you have to think about the future. What are the, what's on the horizon? What are the other types of things that will change the world? Some black swans are positive, some black swans are negative. This is one that is worth highlighting that happened on Friday and, and for those of, us in technology or work in technology is, is as, as significant in some ways as the iPhone or uh, the first time you would have tried Google. Uh, this is called GPT-3, it's from OpenAI. Um, you've maybe heard about artificial intelligence. Um, when you see this work, you can see exactly what artificial intelligence is. And if you think about the flip phone, where the flip phone was 20 years ago and where we are now, just imagine where the world would be in 20 years. So I asked this uh, artificial intelligence system, this chatbot, I'm a corn farmer in South Dakota. I want to increase my profitability. What other crops should I consider growing? And this is how fast it answered the question. As a corn farmer in South Dakota, you have a lot of options when it comes to other crops you can consider growing. Some crops that do well in South Dakota could potentially be profitable for you include soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, sunflowers, and barley. These crops all have different characteristics and growing requirements, so it's important to do your research and choose the ones that will work best for your farm. 
So, and it goes on and on. Now, of course, that's not a perfect answer yet, but you can see how profoundly intelligent the system was at answer, being able to answer that question, understand what I was trying to accomplish, and then take the world of information that exists online, learn from it, and turn it into actual uh, natural language. Um, so this is really a light bulb moment in technology, uh, and you can just guarantee this is going to impact the world in ways we have yet to be able to imagine over the next decade and decades. If you think in the same way of what happened the first time you used a cell phone, an iPhone, or Google, uh, artificial intelligence, this is one of the moments where it's here and you can understand it, and it's gonna start impacting the world in very, very big ways. Some of them made me extremely positive. So let's talk about the costs. So what's happened over the last few years? Uh, input prices have exploded um, because of global supply chain issues and inflation. Uh, chemical costs, you've all experienced that. Uh, we had the price of glyphosate go up. Uh, technical ingredients went up almost 300% uh, in 2021. Uh, fertilizer has gone up uh, about 185%. Fuel, so overall up 67%. Your land values, your rent payments have shot up as well, 23% in the last two years since we last met. Interest rates are up 102% this year. Now, we had historic low interest rates two years ago where it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to refinance. Now we're at 7 8% interest, and we are in a high interest rate environment, uh, which we'll talk about a lot in this afternoon. The flip side of that is prices are surging, and prices have actually climbed greater than the rate of change in inputs. So prices, for the most part, have actually kept pace, and the question is, what happens next? Because we all went through that cycle in 2012, where prices surged, inputs surged, and then prices collapsed and inputs didn't. Right? And that's the pinch and that's the squeeze. That's where FBN was started to help farmers get out of that situation. Farm income is up nearly 85% at record levels, part driven by the prices and inflation that's going on. So that's the positive side of what's happening on. And this is something we'll talk about in our markets update with Dr. Kevin McNew, our chief economist. But we actually have a somewhat bullish outlook, even with all these signals, on what it means for North American farmers. Given this global supply system that exists today and the position of North American farmers in the global agricultural system, the production and use of grains remains in the favor of North American producers. And, and please come to the market outlook with Dr. K uh, Kevin McNew to talk about that. So FBN and how do we fit into this? Our role is to be your team. Our role is to be your partner. Um, the company has grown uh, massively to be able to support it, but also all of you in the network. The principle and the purpose of FBN when we were created was to create a network, uh, to help producers have more power in this system by working together, by sharing information, by participating in a common commerce system. And FBN has grown at an unprecedented rate as well since we last met uh, during COVID. And so let's take a look at what's happened uh, to the FBN system in 15 seconds. This is the history of our growth. Can't see the clock, but it's going through the years up top. And this is about 2020 right here, and then watch it just, it just bursts. Um, so this is what's happened uh, around the United States and Canada in FBN. Well over 55,000 members now, uh, farms of all types participating in FBN. For those of you who are at the first Farmer to Farmer, we could have fit the entire thing into one of the small rooms upstairs. And this is six, seven years, eight years later, we are um, uh, a national global network of, of really tremendous scale. Um, so the focus is getting back in the black and staying there. Uh, because being in, these may have been good years, but we know things change. We know things change. And the one thing you can count on in agriculture is volatility. And it's volatility that happens around you. Now, regardless of what happens in artificial intelligence, the crop is still gonna get grown. People still need to eat. So that won't change. And so, you know, how do you build the business to sustain throughout that system? That's about maximizing that profit, and that's what we'll be talking about the rest of the day. FBN's here to be your partner. We have a whole host of things that we'll talk, spend the next two days talking about of how we do that with our inputs, our CB network, financing and premium programs, insurance, list transparency on pricing, our analytics, our seed, our livestock, on and on, and a range of things that are not on here. That's our job, is to give you leverage in the system. Now, our business has grown to support you as well. And what you may not see when you come to our website is just how much infrastructure is behind the scenes to make all this possible and to support you. 
And we're tremendously proud of that, and our employees are tremendously proud of that. Uh, we are nearly 1,000 employees uh, in the United States, uh, Canada, and Australia. Uh, we are also partnered with uh, over 700 uh, farmer community builders uh, who, are, who work with all of you to support you in the, the use of FBN services or the purchase of FBN products. We built a logistics network, over 32 large facilities around North America, not even counting Australia, um, to be able to support and provide rapid delivery. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So there's a tr tremendous amount of infrastructure to support you. And there's one thing that unites FBN and unites our company more than anything. And it's the reason people come to work at FBN, which is the mission, which is supporting all of you, and people who want to work for you and for farmers uh, in the creation of a better food economy and a better farm economy. Because you all represent an enormously important role in the global economy and in the world. So we, we like to run this analysis to see what does the FBN membership represent? All of you here in the room, but the 55,000 who are also not here in the room all over the world uh, who couldn't be here. Um, by acreage, FBN is now 119 million acres. Uh, we estimate it's about 113 billion of total crop production around the world. Uh, and land value, nearly $600 billion or so. Depends how you analyze this data. But the point is, it's massive. It, it's massive. All of you, you put together are massive. And which means your role is massive. And the importance of your roles is incredibly, incredibly critical. Now, what about the impact? Our estimate is that you produce 1.2 quadrillion calories. That's what a Q is in front of another, quadrillion. Uh, quadrillion is a million trillion? No, a million billion. Um, I may be getting that wrong, but it's a lot. It is a tremendous amount. It's an impossibly large number, um, which if people exist in a, a, the simplest way to look at that on a grain-fed 2,000 calorie a day diet, 1.6 billion people a year could be fed by your production. That is a tremendous amount of production in the global food system. So it, it's really, really remarkable. So that's what we exist to support. That's what you all do on a daily basis. Your jobs are incredibly important. And so we don't take that lightly. And that's what unites us and all the people who work at FBN who want to work, work with you and for you. OK, we're going to have some major announcements this afternoon, uh, thanks in part to some partnerships um, with USDA. And now uh, we have a special remarks that the uh, Secretary of Agriculture has set in uh, from Secretary Tom Vilsack. So please uh, roll the Secretary's remarks and thank you, Secretary Vilsack. Thank you for having me at your Farmer to Farmer event. It seems fitting that this year's theme revolves around adaptation and thriving in the face of adversity. Because our farmers and agricultural producers have definitely seen their fair share of hardships these past few years. But no one represents the strength of the American people more than they do. And so, coming together to discuss the ways where we can meet that adversity with innovation and leadership is an invaluable opportunity for us to build a brighter future. Because at USDA, we believe that when rural America thrives, so does the rest of the country and the Biden-Harris administration has many programs and opportunities that align with our organization's mutual goal of increasing farm performance. That's where we're investing in nutrient management and precision agriculture and centering science in our decision-making. Our precision agriculture work, like our precision, geospatial, and sensor technology programs, gives producers the opportunity to carefully measure, monitor, and micromanage resources to increase efficiency. And our Global Fertilizer Challenge intends to secure $100 million to further fertilizer research and availability. These and many other efforts will create opportunity to ultimately bring more new and better markets to farmers. And there's no better place to start than with a supply chain. We know from the pandemic that our supply chain works, but it isn't always resilient. Fortunately, just last week, with the president's leadership and Congress's quick action to keep our railroads running, it helped us avoid another significant disruption while recognizing that good faith collective bargaining is so important for our workers. Rail isn't the only transportation mode that's been challenged. That's why over the last year, we entered into the first of its kind agreement with a number of ports like those in Oakland, Seattle, and Tacoma 
to help facilitate the flow of agricultural products. Whatever the obstacle may be, USDA is advocating for the needs of farmers and ranchers. And there's still more to be done, and we're very fortunate to have extra resources from the historic bipartisan infrastructure law to get us there. Because one way to grow the supply chain is to improve infrastructure. If you can get your product to market more quickly, efficiently, and affordably, you're going to be more competitive in the marketplace. The historic number of resources provided by this legislation will certainly play a significant role. The Biden-Harris administration has equipped USDA with the tools to build infrastructure, but also to strengthen mid-level supply chains. Earlier this year, we announced a $400 million effort to establish regional food business centers that would do just that by allowing farmers to better tap into local and regional food markets. All of this strengthens the supply chain and ultimately increases competition for farmers like you and those that you serve. When we increase competition, we allow farmers to be leaders in the industry and in innovation, and we're using all of the tools we have to promote competition. Along with President Biden's executive order calling for a whole of government approach, we're also proposing the new Packers and Stockyard Act rule that will protect farmers and ranchers from retaliation by large processors. We're investing $500 million in American-made fertilizer capacity that's meant to spur competition and combat price hikes caused by the war in Ukraine. And the Fertilizer Expansion Production Program will also bring jobs back to the United States. We're looking at ways to enhance choice, quality, and fairness with patents and access to seeds by preparing a report on how to ensure intellectual property in seeds and other inputs. And we're working with other government entities and states to enhance antitrust enforcement. All of these steps give farmers the tools needed to continue to provide America's food, fuel, and fiber. But agricultural producers are also leaders in another important area, combating the climate crisis. The Inflation Reduction Act is a historic, once-in-a-generation investment to do just that. It helps farmers on the farm, creates new and diverse market opportunities for producers and agribusinesses of all sizes, and promotes climate-smart agriculture. And just as it is for many of you, climate-smart agriculture is a big focus for us at USDA. That's why we announced a $3.1 billion investment in partnerships for climate-smart commodities, opportunities that will allow 70 projects across the country and in a broad array of commodities to innovate their climate-smart agricultural practices. One of these projects is from the Midwest Climate Smart Commodity Program. It builds markets and provides funding to farmers via outcome-based contracts for the reduction and removal of carbon dioxide through the adoption of new climate smart practices. These type of projects are a way for USDA to support innovative climate smart agriculture practices and will soon be announcing an additional $300 million in partnerships for climate smart commodities intended to create opportunities for smaller producers and processors. When I think about all the work happening at USDA on the supply chain, competition and climate issues, and so much more, I'm glad to know that there are events like this one meant to highlight ways in which the agricultural community can adapt to challenges and thrive from those lessons. Through collaboration and forward-thinking approaches to our work, we can make a difference. And it's events like this that drive America's agricultural leadership and innovation. So I thank you for the opportunity to be with you today and look forward to our continued work on behalf of American agriculture. Great. Well, thank you, Secretary Vilsack. Uh, it is really a tremendous uh, uh, amount of support uh, that uh, USDA has uh, provided with FBN. We will make some major announcements about that uh, in the 1030 session on FBN's uh, 2023 announcements, which we're very, very excited to finally be able to, uh, to talk about. Okay, now on to uh, today's Farmer to Farmer opening keynote with Jocko Willing. Extreme ownership. You know, one thing the secretary talked about is competition. Competition has been the critical issue uh, for FBN since our creation. We were born because of the lack of competition, the lack of transparency in markets, uh, the lack of competitiveness, not just that you all face, but that we face as a company even trying to do business in agriculture. It is, can be tremendously difficult. Um, and that is so important to be able to have prices and price control, not price control, but price competition that pushes price uh, in a way to benefit producers and keeps prices in check. That's what we're here to do. That's, th that's how we take ownership of our role into the farm economy. Okay, Jocko, um, this is really, really exciting. 
Uh, Jocko is, many of you may know Jocko from his podcast or his books, uh, Discipline Equals Freedom, Extreme Ownership, The Dichotomy of Leadership. He is a number one uh, New York Times bestselling author multiple times. He is the CEO of Echelon Front, and he has a very, very long and distinguished uh, military history uh, as uh, Lieutenant Commander in the Navy SEALs, the former um, uh, executive in charge of West Coast training for the U.S. Navy SEALs, as well as uh, in, in charge of Task Force Bruiser during the Battle of Ramadi. Um, but more than that, Jocko has been a tremendous inspiration and educator, bringing the leadership lessons of the SEALs learned on the battlefield to millions of people. He's done that through social media. Uh, he's done that through his morning posts of his 4.30 a.m. Uh, wake up and workout, uh, which has uh, become a mantra online. And it has inspired millions. This is a chance for me to thank Jocko because it was very helpful for me on a personal tangent. When, when COVID hit and we were suddenly locked in our houses in California, uh, which you can only take for, for too long, so I moved to Nebraska. <laughs> but um, uh, for a period there, uh, you know, you really had to uh, uh, take control. You had to take control of your time. You had to take control of how you're going to adapt to that situation. And that is what Jocko's um, focus is all about. Uh, it is about personal discipline. It is about leadership. It is about communication and how to work in a team and how to deal with adversity in the most extreme situations. Um, so with that, it is a great honor to be able to welcome Jocko to Farmer to Farmer. Let us roll tape. <laughs>